Theophile Schneider Aero. And how about that for a grid? Five laps, and of course, as the flat drop way they go, but a bad start made by the pole position driver. So Kimi Walker bogs down, gets away, just able to move across the cover at Gareth Graham as they accelerate away. One or two, I'm afraid, stranded on the grid. But actually, despite the pop start, Kimi Walker has kept most at bay. But round the outside goes the Blitz and Ben. So it's Ben Collins then who will lead the way as they go round Madwick for the first time. And the Beast of Turin in the middle of the pack as well. But that was a rather hesitant start by Sam there, Sam. Yeah, and most of the pack doing absolutely the right thing, which is not changing lanes once they fall away from the line. The last thing you want in a bunch of open wheel cars like this is to start getting interlocked and just see the workload. <laughs> oh, fantastic onboard shot there. Make the way down through into no name, this little right handed kink. This is where, in particular, uh, very, very hard to kill the speed enough. You've gathered a, gathered a huge amount of momentum through Ford Water. Then the corner tightens ever so slightly through No Name before the direction change of St. Mary's. Not something that these cars are particularly adept to doing. You get the feeling that the car drives you rather than you drive the car out of all of this. But change for the race lead because Ben Collings loses out there. Can he fight back on the outside line, making the move? looked as though it was going to be Rob Hubbard in the Vauxhall. So now, look, the Blitz and Benz, 200 horsepower, gets on with the job. The car, 21 and a half litres, and it just rumbles its way back through into the lead of the race. So a little bit like the modern touring cars that we looked at earlier on. You've got some that are great in a straight line, others that are good through the corners or can break that bit later. And now on Lavent straight, you can see those that have got the grunt because they're carving through the field. Julian Majub, they're also making good progress up on the inside line, number nine, then the Sunbeam, Indianapolis. Fourth at Indy, that car finished, and he goes through to second place. Yeah, and we're seeing, aren't we, the different handling characteristics and performance characteristics of these cars. Some have got the power down the straight, some, like Hubbard and his little Vauxhall 3098, have got a, a smaller, lighter car, a little more nimble in the tighter corners. You're going to see those come alive and challenge the more powerful cars through the twisty section at the back of the lap. So lap one of five in the book, Ben Collings leading at the end of it by 1.8 seconds from Julian Majub. Rob Hubbard is third then, and battle on there, look, because absolutely side by side, around the outside line, uh, tries to go Mark Walker with the Darren 200 horsepower, this 25.4 litre car. He is on the outside line, and he gets the job done, doesn't he? He gets the place then, so he moves back through ahead of Collins on the outside. Uh, hunched shoulders, head down, out of the wind, <laughs> very karting-like in style. And uh, that was a good move around the outside. Just to pick up uh, the Beast of Durian and uh, also dunk a bit away as they make their way down through Ford Water. So Duncan Pitaway needing to make progress here. Back on board, you can see everything that has to go on. It's not just holding on to this enormous steering wheel. You've got this, don't we call it a very early paddle shift gearbox? Don't ask me, I have absolutely <laughs> no idea what any of those things do. Well, they work, whatever they're doing, they work for it. Uh, Julian Majub has lost a place, has he not? Because now, look, uh, coming up through the pack after his pop start is Huey Walker. So number 17, Huey Walker, slow off the line, but he's working his way through to the front, and he's going after Ben Collings, isn't he now? So with the red and yellow crash helmet, look over the shoulder. Never mind about a mirror. For the race lead, Huey Walker goes through, and that was just pure horsepower, seemingly. Yeah, it looks like... Uh... Is that a problem? Is that a problem? Could be. He's losing a lot of time, isn't he? Yeah. So we're lap two of five to go. Elbows out, driving style, isn't it? <laughs> you need the leverage the you can get. Yes. It's like almost motorbike racing. To the wheel, you lean with it. So here's the battle with Ben Collins now coming under attack from Mark Walker, who in turn is trying to fend them off as he comes through. I mean, look at that, the Darak as it comes across the line there, number 200. The car of Mark Walker with the red and white crash helmet. He is sitting on the car. There's barely any bodywork around him at all. So Huey Walker leads. Up into second is Mark Walker. So it's going to be a family feud this to the very end of the race. Julian Majub going through third. And then the Blitz and Benz of Ben Collings, who of course is the brother in law of the Duke of uh, Richmond and Gordon. He's down in fourth place. But he's got a problem. And he seems to be working away at the wheel, I think. Perhaps the engine's got a bit of a problem struggling there. Yeah. Well, the battle is on, and a change for the race leads. This family contest goes the way of Dad now. But coming back at the pair of them, look, Julian Majub on the inside line in the Sunbeam Indianapolis. He splits the walkers. It's the Darak ahead then as they come 
through the right-handed part of St Mary's, now into the left, and where does Huey Walker mount the challenge with the almost wasp tail there staring him in the face on the back of that sunbeam? The tube just having to get out of the throttle there on the apex of St Mary's as he put the front left wheel up onto the kerb. Amazing response, and as you see, lovely balanced drift on the throttle all the way through the second apex of Lavin. Very deft steering inputs there from all three cars. There are people that specialise in racing cars of this era, and you can see why, because they are like nothing else. Julian Majub then splits the walkers, goes through into the race lead, so he's done it, he's got himself in front. Now, who is going to be the first to throw out the anchor on the way into Woodcote? The last of the late breakers here, and, and breaking late does deserve a medal for bravery in one of these cars, but Julian Majub it is that has the advantage by ooh, a couple of lengths. Huey Walker sideways up into second place now. Oh, very oh. sideways. Big yeah, wobble. Him. Big wobble there out of Woodcut. Uh, this is the thing, you've just got to be ever so delicate with your steering input, even though there's this massive hulking great big steering wheel. And it's feels particularly looking at somebody, if they're driving to their upper body, it's not their hands on the steering wheel, it's a whole bodily movement. Three abreast over the line, everything changes. So Mark Walker goes back into the front. The 200 horsepower Darren is ahead there. His son Huey Walker is behind, but now he's going to be alongside because coming out of Magic, Mark Walker goes wide and look now at the Sunbeam because that seems to have the power. Now, can Julian Bajub get his race lead back? Huey Walker retakes the advantage. What a fabulous way to start Speed Week's race activity here. Huey Walker, pole position, duff start, back into the lead. Julian Bajub back up into second. Mark Walker is down in third, saying, Oi, wait for me, I want to be part of this. And Ben Collins, actually, despite losing places earlier, hasn't lost much more time. He's still there or thereabouts in fourth place. And they head now through the first, the right-handed part of St Mary's. And Majub just seals that deal, doesn't he, on the way into No Name, into the lead, covers off the inside into St Mary's, just saying, Oi, not here, pal, you're not coming through yet. <laughs> Thanks very much. But <laughs> opening the door now on the way down into Lavent. So, Huey Walker goes back into the lead. This is lap four of five. Sawing away at the wheel is Huey Walker. And Julian Majub, who's going to be out at the next race for the next generation of Grand Prix car, if you like, uh, staying in that second place. But it was on this section of circuit a lap ago that all the shuffling happened. Now, have a look at Ben Collings. The Blitz and Benz is coming back at the Darak. He's done it. He's got third. He's about to get second. So, all of a sudden, the Blitz and Benz is back at the races. He's going to go from fourth to first. Through he goes, fantastic! Unbelievable. We were saying just a moment ago that he might have some kind of an engine problem. He seemed to be dropping back, struggling for pace, but no longer. Amazing chase for the lead here. Now, can he hang on in there? So this is the next question for him. Ben Collings will have his turn at the front here as he comes into the chicane, turns right, turns left, one more lap to go. It's still anybody out of these four that could win the race as they head now up towards the timing line. So Ben Collings is ahead of Huey Walker, who has a long look over his shoulder. There's Dad in third. Julian Majub has dropped back into fourth place. And the lead gap, half a second, with a lap to go. And look, Walker, two wheels on the grass, goes back through on the inside. Great stuff. Unbelievable. Well, ben Collings in the blitz, and Ben seems to have good power down the, la the back Lavin straight, but didn't seem to have a similar amount of grunt down the pit straight. He steps down to second in favour of Collings. So Huey Walker is in charge, I use the phrase advisedly, because Ben Collings is all over him like a cheap suit here, coming then towards the first part of St Mary's, the right-handed bit, letting go left for the second element, and the four of them still together, Julian Majub looking for a way on the inside, Huey Walker hanging on to the race lead. Look at the graphic that was done at the start of the lap, it's changing all the time. Huey Walker has the advantage for the moment, but the next section of circuit is that fast run out of Lavent Corner down Lavent Straight, and that's where the Blitz and Benz really did have the advantage a lap ago. Yeah, and both Majub, who comes up the inside down into Lavent, or Collings. Collings, I wonder if he's just lining himself up. Hopefully that Blitz and Benz has the propulsion that we saw on the previous lap. Perhaps he can do another run from fourth place back into the lead, but Majub, meanwhile, is covering the inside line. He drops back, Collings goes through, so this is going to end up, as you said earlier, the last of the late breakers. He's done it. He's got the grunt again. Look, so like a lap ago, through he goes, gets the place on the inside. So Ben Collings is ahead. Here comes Mark Walker in the Darak up on the inside. Like to go second. Julian Bajuva's lined to have a go for third. 
Who is it going to be then as they come through Woodcock? Kiwi Walker drifts out wide. Majub tries to squirt up the inside of him. Can't do it. Fantastic race, though. It's got to be longer than five laps. Please on Sunday into the chicane it's going to be Ben Collins that leads out but is he going to lead to the line because he's not there yet look at the Darren starts to close starts to close can he get there in time it's going to be an almost photo finish but it's Ben Collins just ahead by 0.137 of a second Mark Walker second Huey Walker third Julian Majub fourth brilliant wasn't it